Okay. Thanks for joining us. Um, we had about 25 people um, RSVP for this session with the De Cordova and our special guest, Gabriella Levy, um, who is the Corporate Art Loan Program Manager. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And um, we were just going to introduce ourselves. This presentation is co-sponsored by Career Development. And I'm the director, Mary Ellen Schroeder. And Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm Rebecca Wright. I'm the internship manager. And Meg? I'm Meg Adderman, the, uh, the student outreach manager and 2010 illustration alumni. And we are uh, co-sponsoring this with alumni relations. And Megan Cronin is with us as well. Hi there. I'm also an alum, class of 1994. And welcome, everybody, uh, to join us. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Um, and I think that Darlene, I don't think she's here yet, but Darlene Gillen is also um, uh, an alum of MassArt and works in alumni relations. So I am going to pass this over to Gabriella because she has all the information that you're interested in about the mm -hmm. art program. Um, so take it away. Terrific. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me. And thanks to all of you for joining. Um, please feel free to stop me at any point if you have a question um, or if something seems unclear. Um, really excited to be here and speak with you. Um, I guess a super brief um, background. Uh, I come to you um, from a decade long um, uh, career in the art world. Um, I studied ceramics myself, ceramics and business. Um, in college and um, ended up uh, through a whole host of things. Um, I owned a custom porcelain lighting company um, with a studio in, over in Cambridge. Um, and I then worked for quite some time with a, um, with a, uh, with a full service art company um, that is headquartered out in Seattle. Sorry for the background noise. Um, we, and we placed artwork um, with all different types of uh, industries. So in hospitality, in multifamily, in corporate, um, and we were working with artists from around the globe, doing reproductions and original commission work. Um, and then um, this past year, I uh, came to De Cordova um, to sort of uh, to run and sort of reignite the corporate art loan program. Um, so I guess that is where I will uh, start here. I'm going to share my screen. Um, let's see. Can everybody see my screen? Terrific. So, um, so the De Cordova, I'm sure many or all of you are very familiar with the museum. Um, the De Cordova uh, was founded in 1950. Um, it's a terrific contemporary art museum and sculpture park. I like to think of it as sort of a little mini Storm King. Um, and the corporate art loan program itself uh, was started in the 70s. So it's been around for quite a few decades and it's gone through uh, some changes over those decades. So when it first started out, it was really, um, it was really more of uh, an extension of the museum's permanent collection. So corporate donors of the museum would, um, would receive artworks at their offices um, and those pieces were from the permanent collection. They were sort of mini exhibits, if you will. Um, there was no sort of artwork, select, artwork selection. It was whatever curatorial gave them. Um, and for a multitude of reasons, that's not really, um, that's not really an acceptable way to uh, house permanent collection works of a museum. So it sort of morphed into what it is now, which is this terrific platform for emerging New England artists um, to showcase their works in um, a variety of workspaces and public spaces. Um, so work exclusively with regional New England artists. So those states, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. Um, and we don't put, um, we don't put a, a parameter on 
age or anything like that, um, any, any regional artist. Um, and uh, we really, we really are excited by the fact that we provide this opportunity for these artists to place artworks in front of people who they wouldn't necessarily otherwise be able to place artwork in front of. Um, so executives, visitors of spaces, huge public lobby spaces where who knows who's walking by, you never know. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice way to, uh, to know that your artwork is being seen um, and not just sitting in storage. So that's sort of how the program has morphed over the years. Um, it's, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk about why artwork is important in the workspace over the, over the last decade or so. It's really come to light. Of course, there was a little bit of a lull with people not going into offices uh, during COVID, but um, there's some quotes here. I won't read them, but you can sort of take a look. And it just sort of emphasizes the fact that artwork really fosters creativity um, and a sense of community. It's something that employees and visitors can um, sort of uh, come together on, uh, something that has maybe nothing to do with the work that you're doing during your nine to five, but a way to sort of um, connect uh, with, with people you work with. So, and down here, you can sort of see some, some logos of, of some of our corporate members. Um, you may recognize some of the names, maybe not some of the others, but we work with all different industries. So it's not just, uh, you know, sterile uh, lab space. It's not just uh, stuffy law firms, but um, there's some of that uh, there. But we also work with property management companies. We work with um, biotechs, tech companies, um, and each different industry uh, requires sort of a different set of eyes and a different type of aesthetic, uh, which I'm sure you can understand and imagine. Um, so I've sort of explained some of this, but um, the, the corporate members um, come to us, come to the museum and they basically, they wanna support the museum in some way, shape or form. Um, and as a, as a perk to being a corporate member, they're able to participate in this rotating art loan program. And all of the artwork that gets loaned out to these corporate members is from these regional artists uh, like you, and um, it's all on loan to us. So there, we do not purchase any work um, from the regional artist. Everything is on loan to us, and then in turn is on loan to the corporate member. Um, most of these rotation cycles are annual. Uh, we do have some corporate members who rotate uh, every two years or every three years. It's really up to them um, how important the frequency of change is. Uh, for a lot of our corporate members, they, they know that their rotation month is, let's say, June, and the whole staff gets thrilled and excited in May because they know that in June they're going to get all new artwork on the walls, and it's so exciting. Um, some of our corporate members, um, you know, bring together sort of an artwork committee um, where certain people from the office get to participate in the artwork selection process. That's not always so fun on our end, but it's fun on their end. Um, and so that's sort of the basic gist. Uh, the corporate members, in addition to the artwork loan, um, are also receive um, some benefits, uh, you know, including the ability to uh, rent space at the museum for uh, corporate events and, and things like that. So they have their own sort of benefits package. Um, I've sort of explained some of all of this already, but um, each cycle new artwork is, is loaned out to the corporate member, installed in various locations, like I said, so in public spaces, in lobbies, um, in private offices, in conference rooms, in boardrooms. Uh, we do have a couple of locations that like the, these photos here that are sort of street facing, very public facing. Um, and with each artwork, we install a custom label that provides the artist's name, artwork title, year of completion, medium, um, as well as newly uh, in, uh, introduced uh, QR codes um, so that anyone walking by can hold up their phone, scan it, and it will bring you to uh, the Deportiva Corporate Art Loan Program website where there is a lending artist roster and everyone's artist statement, bio, website, social links, um, etc. So we currently work with over 70 corporate members in the greater Boston area. 
Uh, we work with over 215 regional New England artists. Uh, we're really we're really trying to continue growing that. Uh, we want to grow in diversity, whether that is aesthetic diversity, background of artist diversity. Um, that's really important to us. And then um, from those 215 or so artists, we have over 1,500 original artworks that get placed on rotation. And we um, cycle works out um, as we need to so that our corporate members are always seeing fresh and new work. Um, and those, those original works range uh, in medium. So we, I would say the vast majority of the, our collection are, um, are paintings of some sort. Um, typically our works, our works on canvas come to us stretched. Uh, we do have a couple of artists who provide us works on raw canvas um, and provide us some sort of hanging system for that. We do have some works on paper, uh, works on paper required to be framed with glazing, um, ideally non-glare, but uh, we know that's expensive. Um, and then we do have some sculptural work as well, some freestanding sculpture um, and some wall sculpture. Um, and we're really open to growing that as well. So excited to see what all of you, uh, what all of you do. Um, in terms of the benefits to the lending artist, so, um, of course, placing your artwork, but uh, all lending artists receive unlimited free admission to Decordova. Um, so that's lovely. You can come by the park for inspiration anytime you'd like. Uh, currently on view right now, we just opened the New England Triennial, um, which is also, um, it's in coordination with the Fruitlands Museum, which is also another trustee's property. Uh, so highly recommend visiting that. Um, so unlimited free admission to Decordova. Uh, we take us, we take, we take 25% of artwork sales. So at the end of every loan cycle, the artwork that's been on view is available for purchase by the corporate member. Um, so artists would receive 75% of that price of, of that transaction. Um, Decordova handles the, the whole transaction. Um, we newly introduced uh, this fiscal year, which started for us. April 1st, um, we are extending um, small uh, placement honorariums. So when an artwork places at a corporate member, um, we will be paying out artists $150 per placement. Um, that I know may not sound like a lot, but um, it is more than nothing. And um, it is it can, you know, if you if you loan us, you know, let's say 20 works and they're all super popular and they're going out all the time, all the time, all the time, it sort of adds up. So um, that's a very exciting new benefit. Uh, another new benefit this year is a one year complimentary membership to the trustees. So about two or so years ago, uh, Decordova was acquired by the trustees, which um, I'm sure all of you have heard of before. They have about 125 properties across the state of Massachusetts. Some are cultural properties, some are coastal, Crane Beach, um, plenty of properties across uh, Martha's Vineyard and the Cape um, and all and out in Western Mass as well. Um, so that's a lovely perk. Um, recognition as a lending artist on, the, um, on our website. Um, and as I said, um, we're, we're actually working on this on the, on the back end right now, but it's a lovely roster of, of all of our lending artists hyperlinked to um, your sort of profile. So you provide a profile picture, your social links, your website, your artist statement, and your bio. Um, priority consideration for paid site specific installations, uh, registration for events at Decordova, discounts on workshops at Decordova, 10% off at the Decordova shop, um, continual exhibition of your artwork, Opportunity for installation at the Decordova Cafe, which of course um, is highly visited by almost everyone who comes to the museum. Um, opportunity for sales at the completion of the, of the loan cycle. Um, and then um, opportunity to participate in some lending artist, uh, some lending artist community building activities um, and events. Gabriella, can I interrupt for just one moment? We've had some requests in the chat for you to present the slideshow in um, presentation mode. So it's a sure. larger view screen, if you are able to do that. Sure. That'd be great. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you for stopping me because I did not see the chat. <laughs> All right, we'll just scroll through here. All right, um, here is a uh, lending artist testimonial. 
Um, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of Adam O'Day. Um, he makes these beautiful, colorful cityscapes of the Boston area. Um, he is extremely successful in our program and joined us back in 2009. So he's been with us for quite some time. And um, I'll let you sort of read this on your own, but he's had great success selling paintings through, uh, through the program with executives at um, companies like Kayak. Um, and that's really translated into other custom commission work and custom paintings. So um, great success story. And he's certainly not the only one, but uh, just one here, one example here for you to see. Um, Cicely just joined um, the program a couple of months ago. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen her work around the city, maybe. Um, she is one of our artists who uh, provides work as a raw canvas, not stretched. Um, and uh, as you can see, got her MFA at Leslie. Uh, and she has some lovely, lovely, colorful work. Um, and then this is just, uh, just a little bit of the sort of nuts and bolts. Um, so we, the Corporate Art Loan Program staff, we are responsible for the installation and transportation of the artwork during your loan agreement. Um, once artwork has been placed with the corporate member, um, we request the artwork be delivered to us at the museum. Exceptions are made, um, of course, for larger works. Um, and we strive to keep the artwork continually rotating so that it's not sitting in storage. Um, if artwork comes back after a rotation and it doesn't go out again in you know, a couple of months time, we'll request that the artist come and um, take the work back. Uh, so that is my sort of quick overview of the program. I have some other visuals that I wanna share with you, but I'll pause there um, just to see if there are any questions. Okay. Quick question in the chat that I see, um, Gabriella, is are there photo-based works allowed? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I would say in terms of photography, the most successful works are, um, are non-figurative, certainly. Um, and, um, you know, currently the, all of the photography that we place is actually black and white. And I would love for that to change. So if anyone on here um, is a photographer and um, works in color and, um, and your subject matter is, is non-figurative, I would love to see your work. So, um, so that's sort of the perspective artist overview. Um, I do have here um, what we share with our corporate members. A lot of it is sort of similar to what you just saw, but I'm gonna scroll through really quickly because I think it's always helpful to see what the other people are seeing. <laughs> um, so this is of course all background information that you have already seen. Um, some examples of loaned artwork from the program, you can see there is a, a, an aesthetic variety, though everything trends contemporary. Um, up here, you can sort of see what our packages look like, and I'm going to pull out the sample package shortly. Um, but we try to take uh, uh, floor plans and call out all of the artwork locations, and then we break everything out very schematically. Um, and here are some fun installation shots. You can see different placements, um, you know, in a lobby, in an office space, behind a reception desk. Um, large, you know, double height ceilings, um, really, really expansive spaces, and then um, some smaller spaces as well. Some conference rooms and boardrooms. Uh, so I always think that's helpful to see. Oh, we have another question. Um, what is the application process to the loaning artist? To, oh, to be loaning artist, sorry. Terrific question. I will hop to that um, now, and then I'll go back to what I was about to show. So. Um, we, uh, we use a program, um, and I don't know, I guess um, it doesn't matter that I'm sharing this with you, but we use a database called Artwork Archive. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Um, and how this works is we send out a password protected URL um, that is a, a portal for only you. Um, you are able to then fill out all of your information, your contact information, social links, um, address, profile picture, bio, 
um, and then you're able to upload artworks. Um, we need high res images, of course. Um, and then when you upload your artwork, it'll request your title, um, as many images as possible. So detail shots are always helpful. In situ shots are always helpful. It'll allow you to choose the type of art, the medium, the subject matter. Um, and then it will ask you to provide a creation date, market value. Um, we provide a, a, an inventory number and any sort of description um, that you'd like, signature notes. If it is um, if it is a work on paper, we would love to understand the frame size versus the paper size um, and any other details you're able to provide us. So that is um, that is sort of what the, the submission process looks like. In addition to that, we uh, send over a contract. Um, I'm not going to read through this <laughs> over Zoom, but um, we can send over a sample contract to anyone who's interested. Um, and this just states the terms of, of the partnership. Um, it uh, discusses the benefits, um, other terms, um, and then just requests your signature. Um, so you would and then we would also need your W-9 so that we could pay you uh, your honorarium. And um, that is pretty much the process. There's another question. Um, sure. So what are the sizes of works requested? Great question. Um, so we, I, I, I hesitate to give too many parameters because we love to see what's out there. Um, but I would say our sort of bread and butter is the 36 by 48 to like 72 by 48 um, and like 60 by 40s in there. Um, I would say that is really a terrific size for the program. Um, anything smaller, um, that gets tough to place as a single piece. So if it is smaller than let's say a 36 by 48, we'd love to have that in a series um, so that it can take up a, a little bit larger of a, of a wall. A lot of these placements that we're talking about, they're really vast, giant white walls um, in these sort of like open spaces and smaller pieces, of course, then get lost on the wall. So we really, um, we really look for scale. And if, if it's a single piece, not at that scale, then we look for um, groupings and um, triptychs and uh, ways to sort of group together to, to cover more space. Um, in terms of like max size, um, you know, I would say 120 inches uh, wide um, is a is a max size for our truck. Um, so sort of a, a, a good parameter. Um, and then in terms of in terms of orientation, we really want that to be horizontal because we're really talking about these like long expansive hallways. Um, vertical works uh, at that kind of scale, we just don't have as many placements for. Um, so I would say ideally, it, you know, if we're talking about 100, 120 inches wide, we're looking at, you know, 50 inches high would be sort of ideal. Um, does that answer that question? Okay. So um, I will quickly go through um, a sample artwork package. So this is what one of our corporate members would receive. Um, we, again, we take their floor plan, we break out the artwork locations, um, we provide, you know, photos of the space, um, we provide artist names and medium and uh, dimensions. As you can see, the more detail shots, the better. Um, we provide multiple options per location. Um, and then we go through with the client, with the corporate member, we have a review call and we talk about the options and sometimes they are happy and make selections immediately. Sometimes we go back and forth a little bit, um, but this is sort of the gist um, of what these packages look like. And I just think it's, again, helpful to see what the other people are seeing so that you can present to us your work in the best way possible. Um, as you can see here, like, you know, these are 12 by 12, you know, a single 12 by 12 isn't going to do anything for us, um, but as a grouping, it's totally workable. Um, so that's an example there. Um, and you can see, you know, we try to offer nice variety for people. 
Um, so that is a sample. Um, and then the last thing I thought I would show you, just go through some um, fun installation shots because uh, it's always fun to see that. Um, so, you know, all of the locations that we go into, they're all really different. These are some fun um, installation moments behind the scenes. Uh, some of our corporate members have placed um, rails uh, so that we hang everything by cable. Um, you can see these are a recent installation. Some of the spaces are really gorgeous. Um, and we try to make sure that we send over um, photos of the works in the space, and then you can use those for you know, your social media or um, whatever that may be. We just, of course, request that you not contact the corporate member directly. Um, but I just think these are kind of fun to see. Uh, you can get a variety of styles, see some photography, more photography. These were all from last week. <laughs> uh, you know, huge open lobby spaces. That was getting installed. Oh, we had another question. Um, yes, please. While well, I'm scroll scrolling through here. Um, so Another question was, do you accept or interested in digital paintings? At this time, no. Um, at this time, no. Okay. Yep. And um, there, another person interested in textiles or wall hangings? Absolutely. We would love to bring textiles um, into the mix. Um, it is, that would be a, a new medium for us. Um, and we would be super interested to review that. And another person asked, can the artist be involved in the install? Um, so the artist can be involved in the install if it is one of, so we have a couple of very specific placements that we call our site specifics. Um, those are on a semi-annual rotation. Um, they're sort of more public facing and they're more, um, I don't wanna call them commissions because we, uh, we, we're not requesting the artists create new works for it, but um, we request proposals from the artist uh, for the space specifically. So we would send out sort of an RFP with um, dimensions of the space, photos of the space, um, and say, please come back to us with your with a proposal. Um, and in those cases, um, there's a, a larger honorarium associated with it, and we do uh, require the artist to install those works for those specific spaces. Um, otherwise, once the artwork is loaned to the program, um, our team handles all of the installation. So when you said that um, you accept textiles, do you also accept uh, soft sculpture? Can you define soft sculpture? Um, Allie, did you want to ask that question or go further with that question? So I guess I'm talking about um, something that you, and you need to be able to see all sides of it, something where it has a front and a back and it has sides that you need to walk around to. So it, would be, it would be installed on a pedestal, essentially. Okay. Uh, I'm asking. I don't, I don't. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Maybe space like this. Yeah. Or yeah. A lot of, um, yeah. Self sculpture could be installed on a pedestal for sure. Um, or possibly, um, maybe hanging from a certain area. Yeah. I would say for the most part, um, I would say there are, there are a few corporate members who have spaces that would allow for that. Okay. I would say the vast majority don't, um, but that doesn't mean there aren't a couple of a couple that would. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sure. I'm just scrolling through here because I think it's always fun to see, and I think it's probably helpful um, to see the different types of, of placements we're talking about. Um, but happy to keep answering questions. These are great questions. I 
like to encourage people who have a question to unmute themselves and, and ask it. Wait, I have a question. Um, so you go in the um, decor, decor of an art loan program and then just upload, uh, add yourself as an artist and upload your work? So you would reach out to um, to help, C-A-L-P, at the trustees.org. Uh, and okay. someone from my team would email you back with a, um, a custom specific URL and password um, that is exclusive just to you for your uploading purposes. Can you put that in the chat? The um, who we would contact? Yeah. Yep, yeah, I'll put the email address. For Thank sure. you. I didn't mean that to be a direct message. One second. Any other questions? I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm kind of curious from um, a point of view of, of whether or not, like, I know you talked about an honorarium, but do sales happen for artists kind of outside of this? And, and um, yeah. how does that process, if it happens, get negotiated? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I wouldn't say that uh, you know, joining the program, you should bank on um, making X number of sales a year. Um, that would be misleading of me, and I don't want to do that. Um, I would say over, you know, last year we probably had 10, 10 sales over the year. Um, and we, you know, if we have 72 or so corporate members and each corporate member on average has, you know, 12 artworks, um, you can sort of do the math there. So it's not a huge percentage um, because, because um, these corporate members have joined the program because they love the free of change and seeing new artwork all the time. So if they're just purchasing artwork, then they're sort of losing that opportunity for that location. Um, but there, people do fall in love with pieces and they do purchase them. Um, up until this, this now fiscal year for us, um, we, we were making those purchases, in th those were private transactions. We had no, no skin in the game. So we would connect the artist directly with the buyer. Um, and they would have at it, and that was it. We were not incentivized whatsoever to help any sales move forward uh, because we were just losing locations. So we've restructured it so that um, we take 25%, um, and that will incentivize us to um, really push sales much more than we have in the past. Um, we're also looking forward to hopefully putting together um, a holiday event at the end of the year um, where artists can, um, can, sell, uh, can sell their work directly to uh, corporate members who want to participate in the event. So um, that, would be a, that would be an exciting opportunity. Um, but in terms of the sort of like, you know, expectation of putting artwork into the program and having it sell, um, I would... I would keep those expectations um, sort of tempered. <laughs> I got a question for you. Please. Um, so I have a large-ish sculpture that I'm trying to place that's stored in Boston. And sometimes I'm there, but I live in New Mexico. I'm a Mass Art MFA alum. And I was teaching at the museum school and now I'm here. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm not really a New England artist, but I have some work in the area that I would like placed. And this seems like a good fit. You're nodding. You are, you're tied to New England. It's in your blood and roots. We, um, we're not, you know, we're not crazy about, it. you know, we have plenty of people who, lending artists who joined the program when they were here, they were either in school or they just graduated or what have you, and then they moved away, but they left their works in the program and that's fine. And um, the fact that you're here in this meeting <laughs> means that you're, um, you know, you have a connection to mass art and to Boston. And so absolutely, we would love to see, uh, see what you have. Yes, exactly. Um, New Englander, always a New Englander, exactly. 
I'm I'm not seeing the link on the website for how to apply. Did did that get in the chat? I'm just oh, so it's not a, it's not a link. It's just the email address that I put in there. Cal oh, okay. So if you Got just it. email them, email that email, it'll go to my team. Someone will get back to you with a custom link. Yeah. Hi, I have a question. Sure. Um, so. Are you able to just like reach out at any time when you're ready, or is there like some kind of a deadline? Sorry, it's it's a little bit hard for me to hear you. Can you oh. repeat that? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like so, for reaching out to your team via email, is that like on a rolling basis, or are there like? Quarters? Yeah, absolutely, a total rolling basis. Um, you could. Oh, yeah submit one piece with us just to test the waters and see what the process is like and if it mm -hmm. seems you know like something that you're interested in it it places immediately and you're like oh wow this is exciting you can submit as many pieces as you'd like um awesome. and at any time there's no there's no time parameter uh associated we just ask that if if you are submitting works that it means that they are truly available um because once they are approved and you sign um, your paperwork, we immediately start putting them into our packages. And then if they are selected, we would need them within two weeks. So we just ask that whatever you're submitting is actually truly available. All right, great, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Hi, um, I have another question. Sure. Um, if me and my friend are both watching this talk right now, and if we awesome. both, um submitted and became artists could we also submit a work that was a collaboration yeah for sure okay awesome yeah totally um hi i have a question hi susan sure hi um how is our artwork insured while it's being held by either the corporate um borrower or the museum it um it goes under our general um insurance policy so it is covered by our insurance awesome perfect yeah. thank you no problem that's why it's so important that when you upload your work you give us the market value of the work okay i'm not sure if you already covered this but how long do people generally loan out their artwork to your program that's a great question. Um, we have some artists who loan out work, um, you know, exclusively for, you know, let's say a one year period because they know that in 2023, they're going to have a show and they need that work back. Um, we have other artists who um, have have had work in the program since, you know, 1991. Um, so it's it's really up to the artist. We don't require you. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't require that you give it to us forever. Um, anytime you need the artwork back, we will make all concerted effort to get it back to you in a timely fashion. Um, if, if let's say you had had a piece at a show um, and it didn't sell at the show, but and then you place it into the program and then three months later someone contacts you and say oh my god i saw your piece you know six months ago at this show and i didn't buy it then but i really love it i want to buy it please um and you're like oh shit, it's in the program no problem email us tell us we always want artists to make sales like we're not standing in the way of that we will do everything we can if it's already out on loan I guess the contract technically says that we have until the loan period to get it back to you, but that said, so long as we can find a viable approved alternative for the corporate member, we will get it back to you and you can pick it up at the museum. We never want to stand in the way of you making a sale or, a, you know, filling a show or anything like that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? I can't possibly have answered every single question. I, I think there was a question earlier. Uh, Julie, you had asked uh, uh, some questions. Um, and one of them was about the depth of the work, like if, some, if a piece is yeah. kind of like a bas relief or is kind of between 2D and 3D. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so ADA requirements um, needs to be less than four inches, four inches or less um, in depth. If it is going to be, if it is intended to be hung at sort of like, you know, 60 to center normal height, um, if it's something that's intended to be hung super high, then that depth requirement uh, doesn't matter. Um, but I would say four inches is a pretty good, uh, pretty good parameter. I have a question. Sure. Um, and I do airbrushed and I will probably be doing some work on Canvas as well. And if you are accepting just the raw canvas and not stretched, how would that be presented? Would you prefer to have that piece um, put on stretchers or would you do the installation, you do the, the, um, the stretching? So we do not do any stretching. So if you want to submit a work just as a raw canvas, that's okay. But it needs to be stated that this is being submitted as a raw canvas, not being mm -hmm. stretched. And you need to provide us with some sort of hardware hanging system, whether that's mm -hmm. you know a, a bar of wood uh -huh. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that you know, we do have some, some corporate members and some newer corporate members who are much more open to um, the aesthetic of a raw canvas being hung. I would say the majority of corporate members are a little more old school and just are looking for that more finished look of a stretch. Okay. Canvas. But there are some placements where it works, so. This good to know, thank yeah. you. I have another question. Do your uh, corporate partners tend to lean more towards abstract works? It seemed like you showed a lot of works that were more abstract. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I would say um, abstract is is sort of the, the simplest work to place because it's non-offensive, right? Um, mm -hmm. You have to think about it from their perspective. They, you know, they have all sorts of different employees they need to please. They have different types of visitors. All, you know, they don't know who's going to view the work and they don't know how someone's going to view the work. I guess that's true of all artwork and art subjectives. But um, that being said, you know, uh, uh, you know, a nude sketch, never going to place. Um, a, you know, anything that alludes to like burning flames, not going to place. Anything that alludes to um, violence, not going to place. Um, something that is very dark, um, probably not going to place. Um, because these corporate members are looking for brightness, color, cheer, um, and so I would, I would, I would definitely consider those things when you're thinking about what you'd like to submit. Great, thanks. Um, yes, someone already asked about photography and we absolutely accept photography. Of course, it needs to be, um, you know, nicely framed. Um, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be black and white photography. We actually, I'm, I'm currently looking for color photography um, mm -hmm. because we don't have any, um, but absolutely we, we accept photography. And uh, nice. you still wanted that that size. Um, what was it, the thirty by forties, roughly? I, I would say with photography, you know, especially when we're talking about framing, it gets very expensive for artists. So um, mm. we we sort of anticipate that any photography submitted um, is going to be on the smaller side. In that case, we ask that you submit more sort of in series or at least a couple of pieces at a time, so that they can be hung as a grouping and cover a little bit more space. Um, what about work that, um, so I, what I do sometimes is that I will put up my photography in vinyl. So it's directly on the wall. Interesting. Um, what happens to the wall when you take it off? Uh, nothing. Wall safe? Yeah. Interesting. Um, we have not done that in this program before, but I would not be opposed to it. I'd be interested to see what you, if you have some install shots, that would be helpful. Okay. And then I do see what about work with text in it? Um, I think when the text is sort of abstracted um, and maybe a little bit hidden, which is maybe not the point of the work you're describing, um, that's fine. 
um, you know, text is tough because everyone can read English and, um, you know, people interpret things in, you know, all sorts of ways. So it could say, you know, run really fast and someone might think that that's, you know, scary. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's Korean. Then I would say the text would be awesome. Um, let me pull up my screen again. Okay, this was the first, um, this was the first package that I was sharing with you. So just some background on the museum itself. And these are all sculptures that are out in the park right now. Um, and these are just some quotes about, about artwork, fostering creativity in workspaces um, and some logos of some of our corporate members. Again, the verbiage is, is sort of everything that I've already described, but some views of the park. Um, this is the lobby that we've worked on. Uh, again, all of the information um, we've, we've spoken about, these are views of um, an old site specific location. This is in Cambridge actually sort of viewable um, from the T when you cross over uh, the Longfellow Bridge. Are there ever any outdoor works? Um, that's a great question. We actually have had a couple of inquiries recently for some. Um, we have, to date, we have not placed one, but um, I could see us moving in that direction eventually. I think at this point I had already um, made the screen larger. So I think we've probably seen all of this already. Yes. Okay, great. Oh, I have a question for you, Gabriella. I noticed just on the previous slide that there's a $150 replacement, um, like honorarium for the artists. Mm -hmm. If it um, if it goes beyond like the one year, do they get a second honorarium or if it's placed in a different place, do they get a different $150? Yeah, so if the artwork comes back after, if it's on a, an annual cycle and with a, with a corporate member, if it comes back after a year and then it gets placed again, then you get another placement fee. Okay. Um, if it stays with the same corporate member because they choose to extend their current collection for a year, um, we're currently not paying out a second placement because it's staying where it is, um, but that could change in the future. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hmm. Have I now answered everyone's questions? <laughs> Question. Okay, uh, yes. What about um, works on leather? Works on leather, interesting. How are they mounted? I, I could probably have them framed. They would be smaller pieces, it, something be, module, yeah. I'd be super interested to see. Um, I, I think I'm probably visualizing something that maybe isn't what you are thinking of, but um, I'd be really interested to see, especially if they're, if they're nicely framed, that, um, that's always really helpful. Um, I guess sort of related, what about works that have um, plant matter in them? Interesting. Has the plant matter been treated somehow so that it doesn't um, mold or anything like that? Um, well, dried. Okay. Um, and is it is it exposed or is it is it um, is it enclosed somehow? Um, well, I'm thinking if it's going to be in a corporate setting, I'd probably try to enclose it. Yeah, I would say it, it would need to be enclosed. Um, but if that is the case, then we would be thrilled to see whatever it is that you have in mind. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're at um, 224 right now. We have a few more minutes if there's a last minute question for Gabriella. Um, as Meg had said in the chat earlier, this presentation has been recorded and will be in the YouTube um, channel for career development. So you'll be able to see it and 
uh, review the information that's been offered this afternoon. So um, thank you, Gabriella, for giving us more information. And thank you to everyone who's attended today. Yeah. Uh, and I guess we'll be saying goodbye at this point. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all for listening and joining and asking such important questions. And I am hoping to um, see some emails come in from some of you guys. Um, and uh, we would really love to love to work with you and love to support the mass art community. So um, thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have Thanks a good day, everyone. Have thank a great day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Hi, Cloretta. Hi. <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much. Oh, it's always nice to see you. Well, I, this is wonderful opportunities. I'm so glad that you keep us abreast of what's happening. Oh, thank you.